Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. There are numerous filters that you can apply to create different artistic effects in your images. You can access the filters through the filter command on the menu bar or by selecting an effect from the filter gallery. You can view the effect groups in the bottom section of the filter menu drop-down. You can slide over the name of a group like Artistic to view the names of the filters within that group. So you have a whole bunch of different choices here. Now you can then click on one of the names of the filters to apply the filter directly or through a dialog box that launches. Some of the commands when clicked will launch the filter gallery where you can change their settings if desired. You can also select a filter from the filter gallery by selecting filter and then filter gallery from the menu bar. The filter gallery allows you to apply some of the available effects independently or in layered combinations. You can click on one of the names of the effect groups which appear here as folders in the middle pane. And that will display the different filters below it. Lots of different choices again. So then we can just go ahead and click on one and see the effect that it has. You can then use the sliders, the color boxes, and the drop-downs that appear to change the settings of the selected effect. So for example with the colored pencil, you can change the pencil width, you can adjust the stroke pressure, the paper brightness, and so forth. So these are going to change depending on which you choose. Now note that at the bottom of the right pane there is the name of the filter which appears in a layer located right here. You can add another layer to multiply the effects by clicking the new effect layer button at the bottom of the right pane. Now this will add another layer that you can then click to select. Then you can click on another filter effect to apply it to the selected layer that you choose. Now just as with our regular layers you can click and drag the effect layers above or below other effect layers to change the overall effect produced. So you can click and drag these and move them around to change them. You can also delete an effect layer by clicking to select it and then clicking the delete effect layer button at the bottom of the rightmost pane. When you're finished applying effects, which you can preview of course in the left pane over here, you just click OK to apply the effects to the selected layer. Now note that the effects are not actually added as layers that appear in the Layers panel over here. Instead, they are applied to the selected layer contents directly. Now, many of the other filter effects that you can apply are not able to be applied through the filter gallery. You actually have many more effects that you can set by using the filter command in the menu bar. Make sure that you have the correct layer selected in the layers panel before you apply filter effects. If you make a mistake when you apply a filter, just remember that you can use the history panel to reverse your mistakes or simply undo it. Now version CS5 introduced a new filter called Automatic Lens Correction, which can save you time by correcting various lens distortions, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. Photoshop uses an Images EXIF data, which stands for Exchangeable Image File Format, which is the metadata detailing the type of camera and lens used to make adjustments to the image. So you must know this information in order to use the filter. To use the automatic lens correction filter, select filter and then lens correction from the menu bar. That will launch the lens correction dialog box that we see here. In the correction area over here on the right hand side, 
you select the type of correction you wish to fix by selecting the appropriate checkbox. If the corrections you make scale the image beyond the original dimensions, you can select Auto Scale Image to correct it. That's right here. The Edge dropdown specifies what to do with the blank areas that result from some corrections. You can select black or white color, transparency, or to extend the pixels at the edge of the image. In the search criteria area, just below that, select the make and model of the camera and the lens model and profile used to take the image. If you cannot locate the correct profile, you can click the search online button to try and locate it. As long as you have the preview checkbox checked, you'll be able to see adjustments to the image as you make your selections. Now also note in the upper left hand corner of the dialog box that you have some familiar tools that you can use to help you correct your distortions located right over here. You can use the remove distortion tool to click and drag in the image and correct a distortion or use the straighten tool to straighten a crooked image. You can also manually correct lens distortions if you prefer. To do so, click the custom tab over here on the right hand side and then use the various sliders and tools to make your desired corrections. So for example, maybe you want to change the perspective of the image because this was taken from the stage and then you can change the perspective to make it look like you were more straight on when you were taking the image. When you're done making your corrections, you just click OK. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.